What's up everybody, my name is Leon and welcome back to my YouTube channel Curious World of I where I'm sharing my self-discovery journey with others through travel, spirituality, mindset, motivation, and much more. So let's go ahead and jump into, into today's video and the topic of this video as you see in the title below, Traveling While Black. Now this is a video I've been meaning to make for a while because before I traveled, while I was traveling, even coming back home long after my 14 month gap year where I backpacked across 16 different countries, um, a lot of other black people asked me, you know, what was my experience while traveling and, and more so also what was it like as a solo black traveler, especially staying in hostels and bouncing around from country to country. And I've always wanted to give my two cents on the matter and for the most part you know uh, through my videos and sharing my experience i definitely want to inspire other people especially to inspire other black people to travel whether that is to vacation for a week or two to go to a tropical island and with a few friends and just have a fun time or whether if you want a deep cultural experience where you're looking to backpack or go from hostel to hostel or do a work away or a more immersive program where you're learning another language and living it with a family whatever it is um, it's a beautiful thing to me when I see black people traveling in any form or fashion because one thing that I want them to know is that this world is just as much ours as it is anybody else's and we have all rights to get in touch with our adventurous side and explore this world for those who look up some days at the stars and be like man this is such a big world and I want to explore it. Now before I jump into this video I do want to give uh, a couple disclaimers. The first disclaimer is that everybody experience is going to be different and this is just my opinion based on my experiences. So the same way that a blonde hair blue eyed person's experience may be different than my experience. I think the same thing goes for amongst black people as well too. My experience as a black man may be different than a black woman's experience. So, um, and then my second disclaimer is to do your research. And with that being said, take this video as part of your research um, when, you know, going to travel to a different country as I believe anybody should, regardless if you're black or whatever race or ethnicity you are. Um, and at the end of this video, if you stick to the end, I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to kind of research what's going on and, and how accepting or welcoming a country may be to um, black people. So the first thing I want to go ahead and say is that when it comes to traveling and backpacking all the countries in my experience, I would say, I mean, there's really no place that I've heard of also speaking to other black travelers where there are countries where people are like absolutely unwelcoming to black people. For the most part, everybody I know in my experience have had good experiences. Um, there are incidents where things do happen, but for the most part, um, in my opinion, I believe if you grew up in America, there's not much that could happen to you abroad that would really throw you for a loop. There are many people that would say that America is one of the most racist countries in the world. Now, that's their opinion, and some of you may agree with that opinion. But uh, for the most part, I mean, the world is a very friendly place. I believe that there's more good in this world than there is bad based on what I've seen. And for another thing too, the world is waiting to get to know us. I mean, they see us on their TVs, we're involved in their entertainment. Some of their favorite heroes, civil rights leaders are black Americans. So they're, they're very familiar with us and it's a beautiful thing now in this day and age where more and more black people are getting the opportunity to narrate their own story and introduce themselves to the world uh, in a way that's best representation of who they are as opposed to, you know, decades ago that may not have been the case. And for the most part, the world is very curious about us. They want to meet more black American people. So for the, just to put that out there, I would say for the most part, for most countries, you have nothing to worry about. Now, as I said, some experiences are different. For example, I've connected with a lot of black travelers on Clubhouse and they have these rooms sometimes in discussions where, you know, where they talk about the least, uh, the countries that were least, that 
certain travelers felt was least welcoming to black people. Now, some of the countries that were high on that list, I had been to and I had no problem. And some of the countries that were low on that list, you know, I went to and maybe I had an incident or something happened where I didn't quite feel as welcome. So as I said, it's a case by case scenario and take it all into the totality of your research when you're thinking about considering visiting a country. Now, something else that I want to share with you is regardless of, of being black, you are also an American. And in my experience while traveling, it is a privilege to travel with an American passport. Now, granted, there are some countries that don't like Americans. And for the most part, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, being black, sometimes you get a slide on that, especially, I would say, in places like Brazil. And just my experience and people that I met doesn't mean that this can't happen to you. But most of the people I knew that got robbed uh, in, in Brazil were the most part European counterparts. Most of the time being black, if you go to countries that already have a black population, uh, sometimes if you just keep your mouth closed, they'll think that you're from there. And most of the time they, they really won't uh, bother you. But overall, what I'm trying to say is that there is a privilege to travel as an American because obviously they're, they're looking to uh, get your money, your tip money, as being that many Westerners do a lot of the bulk of the traveling and um, and many to them believe that we have a lot of money in most cases and compared to the lifestyle of many other people in many other countries for the most part we do so they want to tap into that so with that comes a privilege uh, a certain level of service and hospitality sometimes when you're carrying an American passport now to answer the question, will you experience racism or discrimination or prejudice in other countries? And I'm going to say yes. Now, for the most part, there's, as I said, every situation is a case by case kind of scenario. Sometimes you may experience a level of racism because of the lack of exposure that they had to black people. And sometimes they don't realize what they're saying or doing may be racist. For the most part, you'll know when somebody's blatantly trying to discriminate against you. However, one thing I will say is that while traveling, a lot of times locals and people that you meet while traveling from other countries will stick up for you and sometimes protect you from that before you can even realize it might be happening, especially for locals who are also part of the travel community. The travel community and the backpacking community, at least in which what I experienced, everybody kind of looks after one another. And when it comes to locals, a lot of times they don't, they don't want that to ruin your experience of their country because maybe they went to America and as a foreigner, maybe somebody from America really took them in and showed them around and they want to pay the favor forward. And there were situations where, for example, especially in Latin America where they do uh, ingest a lot of hip hop culture. And I remember one time we were in Medellin and these kids after the club, they liked to rap for us. And, and you know, and we would rap with them and beatbox and stuff. Gotta pay my rent, then I gotta go eat. I gotta go to sleep, then I gotta go to work. I gotta pay my rent, then it's time to go to church. That's it, I'm done. And um, we were in a kind of like an outdoor kind of restaurant and um, while these kids were kind of rapping, we were also kind of talking to this guy uh, next to us and um, he spoke English. He was a local. He was a Colombian. And during these kids rapping, they said the N word and the local that we met basically like he he nipped that in the butt. He was just like explaining them in Spanish. You don't know the cultural context of the word. And that's what I was saying when it comes to like sometimes the racism and, and and for me i wouldn't even qualify that as like a racist moment because it's not what you say it's how you say it and i don't think those kids were being malicious by saying the n-word while joking and rapping with us and another thing with that you have to understand your tolerance level as well too for example many countries in asia many black solo travelers and black travelers i met that have been to asian countries 
where they don't really see that many black people, they may try to touch your hair, touch you, take pictures with you. And if you know you're somebody that don't really can't tolerate that, then maybe that's something to consider when visiting those countries. Another thing too is, you know, how you respond to those things. Me, sometimes I respond to it very jokingly. Of course, never do anything that's going to jeopardize your integrity. But for example, a lot of times uh, when they see a black person, they'll call you by a black person that they know famously, like 50 Cent, uh, rappers, entertainers. And sometimes there have been times I've just played along with it because that's just my personality. Of course, when there's a situation where I think somebody's intently just trying to be blatantly disrespectful to me, of course you address it. But for the most part, a lot of times it's just cultural differences and they just have not been exposed to black people. And I'm not making an excuse or anything like that. But to be fair, you know, as traveling has exploded and more and more black Americans are traveling and going to rural places and countries outside of the stereotypical cities that most people or touristy cities that most people would visit so you got to kind of anticipate that but if you're traveling and you're living with this kind of i guess you could say high level of openness where you're open to the experience i mean you can learn a lot from these experience and engaging with people who never really closely or intimately engage with black people Another thing that I would like to add while traveling as a, a black person or a solo black person, especially from America, is, um, and this is something I'll touch on in later videos, but meeting other black people from other parts of the world was a very definitely interesting and sometimes eye-opening experience. And also just meeting all different kind of people and just allowing them to get to know me, not as a black male but just as me a person a lot of times when you're participating with people in their cultural rituals and you're sharing your cultural rituals and things that you do back home people let down their guard and they really can get a chance to get to know you and that that's what changes relationships you know communication builds nations and through those sort of experiences you'd be surprised how closely you'll get with people and sometimes they'll open up to you and say you know before I met you, based on what I saw on TV, this is what I thought black people were. But, you know, talking to you and getting to know you, I see that that's not the same. And you really changed my perception. Sometimes conversations get raw and in-depth like that where people will open up and tell you those things. And to me, that's, that's just a, a beautiful thing because at the same time, being an American, ignorant about a lot of different cultures because... Luckily, because we're a very dominant country, we kind of live in a bubble. And you'll realize that when you start traveling, how little you know about other countries and cultures and how much they know about you. And with that being said, you'd be surprised how many countries teach black history. They'll, they'll, a lot of, like here in the United States, it's almost, for most school systems, they don't even allow you to teach black history. They call it critical race theory. But you'll be surprised, you'll go to other countries and they know about Malcolm X, they'll know about, of course, Martin Luther King, they'll know about Marcus Garvey, even though Marcus Garvey was from Jamaica, but he did a lot of his work in the United States. You'd be surprised on what people will know about black culture. Um, black culture is everywhere, and I'll dive deeper into that and to other videos, how just it blew my mind just how black culture is just, black American culture is just everywhere. And that's not just including hip hop, but just all facets of black culture extends far and wide internationally. Now, I wanna say thank you for making it to the end of this video and I hope that my opinion is helping you kind of formulate and maybe even inspiring you to just go ahead and take that leap and to travel because one thing I wanna say, no matter what somebody says about a country, I want to say don't deter don't let that deter you if you hear something negative don't necessarily let that deter you from visiting that country and having your own experience but always in mind understand who you are and where you are at all times because sometimes there may be something politically going on where a lot of times it's not even racism that you experience it's xenophobia where a lot of times a lot of countries or cultures or small rural areas and countries once you go off the off beaten path sometimes they're just not fond of outsiders period doesn't necessarily mean they don't like black people it's just they don't like any kind of outsiders and i definitely had that experience when traveling in Bratislava, uh slovakia 
where at the time it was a political season. During that time in Europe, there was a refugee crisis. So uh, a lot of times we know politicians will make up stories of a crisis that really isn't a crisis and prevent uh, and provide fake solutions to get themselves elected. So there was a lot of, I guess, xenophobic rhetoric that was going on during that time. So when I visited, people seeing me just reminded them of outsiders trying to come into the country. And it was like I was in an Inception movie where everybody was staring at me. I walked into this cafe and this lady like clutched her pearls and she was just like, couldn't, I guess she just couldn't believe an outsider or a black person was in her cafe. Um, also, sometimes, you know, be aware that you're in somebody else's country. So you have to abide by their laws and rules, even social rules and cultural rules. And sometimes Americans have the habit of going places and think we own the place, you know, when that's not the case. And as a black male traveling to these countries, especially when it comes to nightlife, um, I've run into this experience and I know of stories where um, other black men have run into this experience and, and it got really ugly where a lot of times when you're mixing and mingling with the local women, as you might, uh, sometimes the local guys don't like to see that and, that and that may lead to an issue. And so that's why I'm saying always understand who you are and where you are and what's going on around you. Um, to always make sure that, yeah, if you're in a country where they don't really like outsiders, doesn't mean you can't travel to that country, but you just have to be aware of certain things. Or I know I've heard of experiences in countries where um, they all they think all black women are prostitutes. And so they're going to be catcalling and whistling at you. And I'm not saying to black women that not to go to that country, but be aware of that and and to say that too i want to say shout out to all the black female solo travelers i would say that in my time backpacking i met way more black solo female travelers than i did uh black males which i found that was that was just dope to really see a lot of the surprisingly i made a lot of black american friends while traveling um and a lot of them were women so that was awesome to see and actually today is International Women's Day too so shout out to all the women but as I said before tips if you made it to the end of this video and I want to say I wrote them down the to do research to really figure out kind of what's going on culturally if a country is I guess you could say welcoming to black people is of course Google and YouTube so YouTubing you probably ran into this video to help kind of figure out the sentiment of what will be going on when you get to a country. I would say social media connections. Uh, I studied abroad in Peru and I can, there's been dozens of people who have reached out to me, uh, other black people that's like, hey, I saw you lived in Peru. What was your experience like? That's a great way. I mean, just type in a country, hashtag, I mean, uh, hashtag the country. And if you see uh, a picture with some black people in it that been to that country, uh, just DM them and see what their experience was and sometimes you'll find black people living in those countries as we did in uh, Brazil when I was traveling with my friends I met a lot of black Americans that were living in Brazil that gave us the inside scoop to their experience so I would say social media connections is a phenomenal great one to just get the inside scoop of you know how things are in the country while traveling as a black person I would say asking locals. So I would say even though I went to 16 countries, I felt like I went all around the world because in hostels, you meet people from every single country. And I would just ask them straight up, hey man, how is it, how is it in your country, you know, as a black person? And some will say, you know, you can visit, but you know, a lot of people aren't used to seeing black people or, you know, there's a lot of nationalism in our country, so they don't really like to see outsiders. So maybe socially you, you might have a hard time connecting with locals. And, and I've had those experiences and, you, you know, I say, well, whatever, screw it. I'll just go interpersonal and just rock by myself or I connect with people in the hostel, which I do majority of the time when I feel like um, the local, I, I can't seem to really tap in with the local experience. Um, I would say knowing the political season, knowing what's going on politically, because as I said, if there's xenophobic rhetoric, if there's 
discriminatory rhetoric going on in the country, they may not be too fond of seeing outsiders, including black people. So you have to keep that in mind too, knowing what's going on politically. Other countries do the same thing. Um, all countries pretty much have an app for their citizens, uh, an app run by the government where they give you full warnings of things to expect when visiting a country such as pickpocketings and hitting on the country, maybe even kidnap. And for countries that, were predom that have predominantly people of African descent, um, a lot of times in the U.S. for the U.S. warning, they would warn them because of all the police brutality issues that we've had that have made the mainstream news. Um, they would warn their citizens about that when traveling to America. So knowing political seasons, I would say, um, do they have a already, uh, I would say, population of people that are of African descent and know and figure out how they treat them? Um, because a lot of times I've also been to countries that also have a he heavy population of people of African descent or people who have migrated specifically from Africa to that country. And uh, sometimes the same thing in America, they experience discrimination. And um, those countries are cool because it's like, you get to meet all these other people of African descent and they kind of take you in and they kind of show you their local experience, which a lot of times you find to be similar to your experience um, socially as a black american living in america um so yeah that would be all my tips and i hope that that helped i hope that this video helped and again this is just my opinion every experience is going to be different understand that this world is just as much yours to travel and explore and i will definitely be making some uh secondary videos to this going deeper into my experience as a solo black traveler going past whether or not if i felt welcome but just sort of kind of you know when you're living in a country you'd be surprised how culture and the programming and social engineering really play, plays a role in how you view yourself how you view the world around you and how you view other people and when you take a break from that and and immerse yourself in other cultures and and meet with other black people from around the world it really begins to uh reformulate how you view things so i'll definitely touch into that in the next video but for now peace